Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're talking about loneliness, a subject that I am overqualified to talk about as uh, somebody who in my adult life I have had massive stretches of solitude and isolation and loneliness and I've learned a lot about myself through that and I've learned a lot about kind of like the incredible dangers of isolation and disconnection as well as some of the gifts of solitude and silence and introspection yeah i just want to share a few thoughts and experiences because we're living in this age of such intense disconnection and isolation and loneliness and i see it all around me um and yeah in my immediate friends i think most of my friends are similar to me in the sense that they're more kind of introspective introverted people and they can slip into disconnection isolation loneliness and i've had what i would call like a recurrent conversation with friends over the last few years uh it's like i'll have the same conversation with a different person in a different time and place um and the most recent version of it was a few months ago i was talking to a friend and they were just feeling crushed by loneliness and isolation and hopelessness. They were sharing this with me and kind of going in circles, talking about how hopeless it was, how alone they were, and how it was never going to change. And I was sitting on the other side of this conversation, trying to be just like calm and supportive and realizing that in that moment, there was this opportunity for connection right there. I was there, sitting, listening, open, present, supportive, but because their anxiety or their feelings were so active, they couldn't feel that connection. They couldn't let it in. They couldn't even recognize it. And I feel like that is something I do and something a lot of people do. We we feel this loneliness and this hopelessness and there might be opportunities for connection right at our fingertips but because of the spiral of thinking or feelings or whatever we don't see it we don't open up to it we don't receive it and maybe it's because it doesn't look the way we think it would or maybe it's because it would require us to really like drop down into the present moment and feel something that could be very vulnerable and awkward, which is to like open up in real life to some opportunity for connection. And that's one of the lessons I've learned in my journey with loneliness and isolation is that the, the antidote for me is connection. And connection sometimes comes in surprisingly immediate forms it's it's usually way closer than i realize there are these opportunities that are like all around the periphery of my life but they're often scarier than i would think they're often more vulnerable and raw and there's maybe like a squirmy feeling of embarrassing intimacy at just like opening up to what's right here and that conversation with my friend um, it's just a, a great example of how if if we're not present to the moment then we're not gonna like the loneliness will remain intact even if the most beautiful opportunity for connection shows up if if we're not open if we're not present if we're not available to show up to it, um, doesn't really get in. And so the cure for loneliness isn't necessarily people or experiences. It's being present and it's connection. In my experience, it's like if I'm not being present and I'm not connecting to what's happening, then I can have a lot of people around. I can have a lot of experiences and I'll still feel this sense of isolation and disconnection. But if I'm really present and I'm really connecting to what's happening, I can have a very few experiences 
and they will be incredibly nourishing. I'll just feel like so enriched by so little if I'm really present to soak it up and to connect. And uh, sometimes I can feel awkward and scary to be, you know, really present to myself or really present with others. Um, but for me, I think that's why recently in my life, even though I'm a very solitary person, I, uh, I mean, I can just feel filled up so easily by connection. You know, like I just have, a, I just have like a handful of close friends. I don't have a giant network of friends at all. I have a very small like inner circle of friends. Um, and I feel often quite filled up by that because there's a level of honesty and transparency and vulnerability in those connections. So it just like fills me up. And a lot of other things in my life kind of fill up that, that, that place of connection that surprise me. And they don't look the way that my mind probably would fantasize that connection would look. You know, for example, my job, I work as a server in the evenings in a restaurant, and it fills up this very deep place with tons of connection with my coworkers, with the guests that come in, in that come in and out of the restaurant that I get to have tiny little interactions with, some of which are really beautiful, some of which are really awkward and strange and annoying. Um, because I show up to that job with a certain receptivity, uh, it can really, really fill up a place in me. And it's not at all how a certain isolated, lonely part of me would imagine getting filled up. But when I open myself up to the possibilities for connection that are there in that work environment, it's like, whoa, there's all these people. And there's all these opportunities to be kind and to express appreciation and to connect and to share. Um, yeah, and, and I find that the more I look, the more little places there are on the periphery of my life to, to play with that, to experience connection. And it's often awkward and it's often scary. And, um, but that's why I'm still very much in process with all of this. I'm not someone who has this figured out, this loneliness thing. I'm just someone who has some thoughts to share. And one other thought that I do have to share is I've, over the years, because I've spent so much time in solitude and sometimes like extended periods of solitude, um, I've found that there's this intimacy with myself that I've become really comfortable with, almost because I was like forced into it. But I noticed that sometimes um, friends or acquaintances, they'll be quite uncomfortable when left alone. And they'll really want to distract themselves from themselves, from their feelings or their thoughts or whatever it is. And I think a part of it, it's almost like if you were left alone with a stranger, there might be this awkwardness. You know, it's like, what do I do? What are we going to talk about? We don't even really know each other. Uh, maybe I should just get on my phone, you know, and or maybe we, I should just like watch a show or um it's this way of avoiding the vulnerability or awkwardness of just breaking the ice, maybe, you know? Because once you break the ice, it's usually not that hard to be around someone. And I think that being by oneself can be kind of similar. You have to, like, get through this awkward silence and then notice, like, oh, my God, this guy's not so bad. Oof, this is interesting, all these feelings. Oh, yeah, why did I get angry the other day? I want to reflect on that. Or what's going on in me right now? I kind of want to just feel this. Um, I carve out a time every day to go for a walk by myself in the woods. And it's this opportunity to, like, just, like, not distract myself, not be checking my phone at all, and really just be present to myself with a quality of attention that... uh is almost like the quality of attention that I would want to give to a really a, a fascinating date that I was going on. Imagine uh, going on a date with someone who's extremely beautiful and interesting. 
I wouldn't want to be like distracting myself the whole time, looking at my phone, trying to avoid looking at them or like tuning into them and noticing what's going on. I would want to be really present. And even at the risk of being awkward, I would want to be present and pay attention. And there's a way of being with myself that feels like that. It feels like um, instead of feeling lonely, like when I go on that walk every day, I never wish that somebody else was there. Uh, I never think, oh, man, you know what would make this walk better? Someone who is hot or somebody who is interesting. Because to a certain part of me, it's like, no, no, no. Miles, right now, you are the interesting person. Like, you, you are this amazing, fascinating person to get to know, to listen to, to be with, to enjoy. And I know that sounds kind of like the most quintessentially corny thing possible. <laughs> but for me, I think that's, to, say, to use a cliche, I feel like that's a distinction between loneliness and solitude. Solitude is when you can actually kind of like sink in to the feeling of being with yourself and being present to the silence, to the beauty of the surroundings, to the beauty of this moment in your life, which is just this temporary flicker in the bigger story of your life. You know, it's, it's beautiful to be able to do that. It's so good. I think for me, it's such a big part of my mental health and my emotional hygiene. And it might help me be more present to other people, too. And therefore let in that connection and feel less of a sense of loneliness when I'm in a crowd. And yeah, none of that is to romanticize isolation at all or loneliness. Because I understand very personally how vital human connection is for us. It's so, so important. And sometimes it can feel so difficult to find it, to experience it. It can feel like such a scarce thing. And occasionally, it might be right at our fingertips. There might be more opportunities for it around us than we realize. Uh, we'll just have to drop down into the present moment and actually open up to them. And sometimes that can be scary as hell. And sometimes it doesn't go well. You know, sometimes I'll open up to somebody and I'll feel embarrassed because they're not feeling it. And it's this experience of rejection. But I'm of the disposition where I'll take that and I'll just be like, okay, the important thing is that I opened up. It's not that, that I got something or that somebody validated me. It's that I'm building the muscle of opening up to life. And more often than, like, way more often, people are receptive in my very limited subjective experience. And sometimes finding the safest person possible to start opening up to and start feeling connection with might be a counselor or a therapist, or it might be just the safest friend that you have. You know, one other thing that has helped me um, has been focusing, like, being creative. Like right now in my life, I've got a lot of going on creatively. And um, man, that provides me a profound sense of connection too. And even like a lot of the things I'm creating, like as a writer, I'm, you know, if I'm writing a book, that's a very introspective, isolating thing. But it also is fundamentally geared towards connecting with humanity. Like when I'm writing, it's this act of like communication with the intent of sharing. So maybe that makes it feel um, more, more connecting. But all I know is that when I'm engaged on those creative levels, uh, it, it fills up that connection place in me, strangely. You know? And it's, it's not a substitute for human connection by any, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it's, it, it somehow feels connected. I'm not entirely sure how. I'll get back to you on that. Anyhow, that's all I wanted to share today, you guys. Just some thoughts on loneliness, isolation, and connection. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, you can let me know. If you're on YouTube, you can leave a comment. You can like this, and you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're streaming this anywhere, uh, you can subscribe on the streaming platform of your choice to the podcast. 
And if you are curious about my book, you will find info about that in the description or in the show notes. And until next time, take care, everybody.